Hi, it's Sonia, welcome back. Uh, today is going to be a sketchbook process video from my Loose Still Life sketchbook. Um, as you can see, I've already started this spread. On the right hand side there, there's a vase with some gouache flowers in. And, uh, and I'm just in this, you can see I'm about to put a bit of collage onto the left hand side of the page. Um, for the, I, I really quite like these head shaped ceramic vases I saw on Pinterest. So I use, loosely use the outline of one of those and then I filled in that head there with, um, I found a painting of like an old master painting and I just sort of loosely penciled, um, painted in that face. So it's like, I kind of like sometimes combining different references to make something of my own. Um, and yeah, essentially also, I was a bit bored of drawing this, my own vases. So I was like, let's go and look online for some inspiration. Uh, those flowers, I've painted those flowers quite a bit recently. So I feel like I'm getting a bit of almost muscle memory in terms of the uh, shapes, which allows me then to be a bit more experimental. To be honest with you, I, this is, I'm starting to, yeah, just alter the colors, make up the composition more and play around, so that's the fun. That is the advantage of drawing something again and again. You learn, it's like you learn the shapes or it goes into your memory bank and you've got the, you know, you can just play about with um, with with making your own compositions up. So in this video, you'll see I'm gonna, it's quite slow, it's a slow video because I'm gonna get out paints and that's my process. I sort of off the cuff um, came up with the color scheme for this one. And uh, so, yeah, please do. I hope you've got your sketchbooks out, all your fun art materials. And I think these are hopefully the sort of go good videos to draw and paint along to. This is sort of the thing that I like to draw and paint along to because it is so slow and um, not sped up. Like you can draw and then look up and just see what someone's doing. So you've got a bit of company. And I thought I'd make it a little bit of a chatty video because it is sort of nearly 20 minutes long and answer um, another question that I got a while ago. So yeah, uh, hoping you're enjoying your uh, drawing session wherever you are. The question that I'm gonna have a quick, uh, well, have a chat about is uh, from Christina. Thank you, Christina. And it is, it's, what are my thoughts on being an artist versus a hobbyist? Uh, as always, I invite, I invite you. These are great questions to ponder on. So yeah, have a think about what, how you feel about that question too. And do you, does it matter? Do you see yourself uh, as either one? Um, I think the first thing I would say is that we're going to get into, I guess, um, labels. Like sometimes how we label ourselves, it matters in that it can be positive sometimes if we uh, feel we are something or we can call ourselves something. And there can also be negative um, aspects to obviously to labeling people. Uh, you know, I feel it can be quite limiting and um yeah so wh why do why does it matter um to who does it matter i guess those are two sort of interesting questions um and for you i mean yeah is it helpful if you call yourself something and you can get even even more within artist you can even get more into sort of like limiting aren't you you can say oh someone might say for example like when you listen to podcasts they say, oh Blur is um, an oil painter. And then it feels, for me personally, I feel that's quite, I mean, that's someone who's obviously skilled at their craft and knows who they are. But for me, I'd find that quite limiting if someone said, oh, I'm just a sketchbook artist or I'm just a acrylic artist. Um, I don't like, I don't want to be sort of limited in that way because I'm, you know, exploring mixed media. I would actually also say even term artist, I find at the moment, I would say I'm more, I would say I'm more of a creative. I find that is a helpful, when I say I'm a creative, that's like, I feel more energized and open to exploring my curiosity and learning and trying new things. Um, especially at the moment because you know making videos making uh, as it were I'm making creative content some of my time is now spent doing that so 
I'm not, I don't solely see myself uh, as just an artist. Um, and yeah, but I think if we're going to get down to the nitty gritty or do definitions matter, in some respects they do. I mean, from a very practical point of view, from a financial point of view, it could be argued, you know, like what you write down on your tax forms or on your forms matters. Like, you know, are you a professional artist or what's your, like, you know, role, as it were. Um, for example, for myself, at the, with the tax, I'm like, then I am a hobbyist. I'm a hobby artist, because I don't, I'm not earning enough to, like, I don't run it as a business yet. Um, I didn't have the headspace or time for that. Um, but then I did start earning, you know, like, it's, it's become my side hustle along the way. And I do earn a bit, last year, I was like, oh, you know, I do earn a bit from it, so through um and so maybe actually you could argue maybe I could view myself as more of a professional artist like I do um make money through share, uh, selling prints with a print company uh, last year I got some payments through for reels um so yeah I guess so I think it sometimes these these terms have to be a bit fluid personally look there's, if you want to see yourself as a hobbyist with regards to art or say art is your hobby that's cool like I'm all for it and I think I think the problem for me with that is I have like I love hobbies I like like you know I get a lot of um I like to enjoy things in life when I can especially because life can be really serious so um for example I would say why I consider myself an artist uh, and it's nothing to do with the money aspect of it. I think even if I earned no money and I wasn't declaring, any, I had nothing to declare in tax, um, I'd still see myself as an artist. I don't see my making of art as a hobby because I have other hobbies um, and they are, for example, my hobby, I have read, I love reading. I've always loved reading. So I read a lot and that's my hobby. Um, and I run, I'm a run, I, like I am a runner. Um, and I've entered, you know, like some races and things in the past, but I see running, running as a hobby. I think for me, art is, it's kind of different. Like, and I'm also going to mention my other video because this is very relevant where I talked about my, um, the video with the title, was it, why do, why some of us hide our art, hide our art, um, why do we hide our art from people? Why do we not talk about it? Yet we do it and it's important to us. Uh, this is really relevant because um, I think I feel in my whole, I do, I feel like I am an artist. I don't think I've always felt that. I think it's when, you know, obviously when I sort of stopped drawing and painting and I focused on my other career when I was younger in my 20s, um, I didn't, I kind of, I've spoken about it, but I think I kind of like pushed that down. Um, I appreciated art, but I was not an artist then. I think that's just, for me, a fact. Um, but I now embrace the fact that I, like art is, it feels quite central to me. I feel like that is part of who I am and I'm proud of that now. Um, but I think to to get to this point I think I had to protect that and for a lot of times I, I wouldn't talk to people who are like my nearest and dearest about it and say that to them I'd say everything but that I've just said oh yeah I'm a full-time mum I'm moving a lot um you know I'm and all the I'm managing my property I'm doing everything but that yet internally I kept that that because I, I spoke about it but I think I was just like I, I don't, I think it makes me, I don't know why it shouldn't make you feel vulnerable, but it, it makes me, it's quite a vulnerable, it felt like I, it, yeah, I feel quite vulnerable saying I'm an artist, and I don't know why, I think that's due to, I discussed this again, like maybe some childhood issues, because I guess, I think the other thing with labelling ourselves, or what we want to call ourselves, also, we all know in our day-to-day -day life, like the stereotypes, and stereotypes vary in cultures, um, and they, you know, there's some, you know, not great stereotypes. So, for example, um, maybe 
there may be this stereotype of artists, uh, the whole starving artist stereotype, that artists are always poor and penniless, or that's kind of all struggling, or maybe, I mean, this sounds really bad. I don't think this, but in some circles, um, people might be like, oh, they're more likely, like, if you, okay, maybe it was, there was concerns, if you go to art school, they'd be more likely to be doing drugs, or, I'm not, all I know is, I'm not going to say who says this sort of stuff, but people do, you may, you may know people around you who don't always say the most positive of things about people. And that's just life. And there are, unfortunately, however much we battle against it, there are stereotypes. And then there's even also, like, you can go from the whole starving artist, that person, you know, isn't doing terribly well to, um, um, okay, I, actually, I will say this, because this is quite interesting story. And this just shows how even in um, even in careers where you think like mental health careers where people are meant to be more understanding. Okay, so when I was, I'm going to tell a quick story. Bear with me. When I was um, I was burnt out basically as a reg in psychiatry in London, and I think, and I had trouble admitting this because you know, as a woman, like a female doctor, like I felt, I, I guess I knew I was struggling with. It, I wanted something more in my life. I was also wanting to have kids and that wasn't going particularly well and I'd been referred for infertility treatment. Like there was a good... And my husband was struggling to get a job in his line of work, which is... Um, like there was a lot going on and um, I basically... We were, he, that's it, he'd got a job as a clinical fellow in New Zealand. So we were thinking about moving abroad to New Zealand. And I was like, maybe I just need a break from psychiatry in the UK and I'll get a job in, you know, well... Um, get a job in New Zealand and then it happened that he got a job in London so we stayed but I had quit I basically resigned from my rotation and then like I you know obviously had to say actually we're not going to New Zealand but they were going to stay in London but actually I don't want to continue I, I want to leave and I had a my um the person nobody obviously people weren't happy about this because uh, they wouldn't be like you see you want people to stay in their jobs and I had to have um and like a chat with the what do you call it like the rotation coordinator I think and he was basically trying to dissuade me and then I ended up saying what I wanted to do and I was like look I'm not wanting to leave leave necessarily I want to leave the rotation have a sabbatical and I'd got into like a pre-foundation course and I was like well maybe in the long run I've always loved art like I liked art at school and I'd like to explore if I could like maybe do a part-time art degree and then just look come on the side or just you know like be a staff grade doctor I wasn't particularly ambitious I don't want to be a consultant and all the stress that's involved in that and then I remember he was like he was like he said he said to me, oh, yeah, I used to like art too. I was really into art. But at some level, you know, you've got to be practical. Um, you don't. You could end up like, um, you don't want to end up like a drunk in, if you follow, I, don't, I can't remember, I was a bit shocked, like I'm sure he's talking about the drunk in the gutter analogy, that if I pursued art, I was going to like lose everything that I'd get. I don't, it was just, all I know is it wasn't, there wasn't any support there and yeah it was it confirmed that a lot of people do aren't terribly supportive of the image of there is this whole starving artist image essentially and that continues and that is a rambling story but basically uh rightly or wrongly I did resign from my um rotation and had a sabbatical and then went on to have kids and have and I focused on art and then I learned from that I was just going to keep it to be honest with you quiet I wasn't sure I wanted people's input into me if I was going to fail at this or whatever like it was my thing and I was just going to do it and I wanted to see myself as an artist and that's that enough said yeah so um and the other thing I wanted to talk about is in terms of uh, I know a lot of us, how we refer to what we're doing even with art, in art, I, I think you have to find what is going to make you feel more, most confident, because I believe you out there, you are all artists. Um, and if you don't want to be an artist, that's fine, don't, you're not an artist. But I think it is really important that you do, um, you do consider yourself 
uh, you make it so that you want to do it you need to m make it of importance to you and that's why I've been talking a lot about this book I've been reading I shall probably keep going on about it like you know your brain on art how the arts transform us because there you actually see the scientific the neuroscience um, uh, research that's showing that the arts are are like you know very beneficial to us they're beneficial to our well-being um, in terms of mental health physical health and that in turn is hopefully going to help us be you know more productive and happier and also um what's the word um uh, also help the community like help our family our friends maybe help us if we have to get other jobs like just to you know to have some positive to have some enjoyment of life is important um, to do some of the hard stuff and to be resilient in the hard times that we all will, you know, people have to deal with. Um, and I also sometimes take, look, I talk, when I do my abstract sketchbooks, this is something I thought I'd quickly mention. Um, I know a lot of people, like people talk about um, doodling and they call it doodle art and they, so, you know, or however, and that's great. I mean, whatever's going to make help facilitate you doing the thing that you want to do so um personally I call it my abstract sketchbook and I know like sometimes you think I was like oh that's your you know I love doodling too and it's like I prob so this is the funny thing I I get that to some people's eyes I am doodling for me I am making abstract art and it's a meditative practice but for me that spread is um that spread in my sketchbook I don't, I, you can call it what you will, but for me, it's my abstract sketchbook. That's what gets me uh, going in it because I love abstract artists. I'm looking at, you know, like I think about Agnes Martin, I'm thinking about Louise Bourgeois um, and my practice, it's, yes, I can make some of these, um, these uh, sketches while I'm on the phone and I can, but I'm putting the thoughts, I'm, I don't know how to explain it, but it is a process and it is an art process. And for me, it results in an abstract page of art. But ca call it what you will. I'm going to call what call it what makes me, um, what helps me to do more of it because it, I find it beneficial to my own, like, you know, um, my, my own way of working. So, yeah, I think I'm coming towards the end of this. I've got like a couple of minutes. As you can see, I have, uh, I just want to say, so just to conclude, because this is a bit of a rambly one, and I like, so yeah, it is rambly, and I cannot keep editing it. Like, I feel like I am keep going back, thinking, oh, what have I just said? But the point is, okay, at the end of the day, artist versus hobbyist. You need, you out there, need to think about what works for you. What term, how do you refer yourself? maybe not refer to yourself, just do the work. But you are an artist. And if you don't want to be an artist, and actually you find yourself hating making art, wanting to go into the sciences, wanting to be a runner, you do you. Like at the end of the day, there are so many outside expectations, pressures on us. Um, at some level, it's good to know ourselves, to be ourselves, um, and I think you want, it, for me, it's been helpful calling myself an artist because calling myself an artist has meant I have done so much more artwork and I feel like I've put in the hours, I have grown. Um, I do feel it's made me like, an, I'm a nicer person when I'm making art because I think I'm more empathetic. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Empathetic, I'm more... I've got more time for my kids, for my family, ironically enough. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, if I have to, for whatever reason, go get another job, I hope I can get a job that will allow me to have the headspace to make art on the side, to still be a part-time artist. It, you know, so that's how I view it at the moment. Okay, so I'm coming towards the end of this video. You can see I'm just finishing off, and I do have added that collage vase in on the left. Yeah, this was a fun spread. And yeah, thanks for bearing with me in this one. Um, 
please do let me know your in the comments any thoughts you have maybe i can like re, you know like it's something to look into further um thanks very much and i will say uh bye for now <laughs>